the pathophysiology of pneumonia. So what causes it? Pneumonia is an infection in the lungs caused by microbes resulting in inflammation. The inflammation brings water into the lung tissue. The microbes are normally taken care of by the body's natural defense, such as coughing, mucociliary, escalator, microphages. But left inside the lungs, the microbes can colonize in the bronchioles or alveoli causing pneumonia. So in short, a variety of organisms, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi, can cause pneumonia. Causes and risk. Pneumonia is classified according to the types of germs that causes it and where you got it from. You have several causes of pneumonia. The first one is community acquired pneumonia, hospital acquired pneumonia, healthcare acquired pneumonia, ventilator associated pneumonia, and of course our favorite aspiration pneumonia. So community acquired pneumonia is the most common type of pneumonia and it occurs outside of the hospital setting or other healthcare facilities and it may be caused by bacteria, bacteria like organisms, microplasma, pneumonia, fungi, and viruses, including the Corona-19. So as far as the bacteria goes, the most common cause of bacterial pneumonia in the United States is Staphylococcus pneumoniae. This type of pneumonia occurs on its own or after you've had a cold or flu, and it may affect one part of the lung, a condition called lobar pneumonia. Microplasma pneumoniae can also cause pneumonia, and it's typically produce milder symptoms than do other types of pneumonia, and it's often called walking pneumonia, which is the informal name given for this type of pneumonia, which is typically isn't severe enough to require bed rest, hence the name walking pneumonia. Fungi, this type of pneumonia is most common in people with chronic health problems or weakened immune system, and in people who have inhaled large doses of this organism. The fungi that cause it can be found in soil or bird droppings and vary depending on geographic location. And then of course we have viruses. Some of the viruses that cause flu and colds can also cause pneumonia. Viruses are most common causes of pneumonia in children younger than five, and the viral pneumonia is usually mild, but in some cases it can be very serious. The coronavirus, or COVID-19, may also cause pneumonia, which can become very severe. Next we have hospital-acquired pneumonia. Some people catch this pneumonia during a hospital stay for other illnesses, so hence the name hospital-acquired pneumonia. And it can be serious because the bacteria causing it may be more resistant to antibiotics and because the people who get it are already sick. People who are often breathing on machines or ventilators and are often used in intensive care units are at higher risk for this type of pneumonia. Next is healthcare acquired pneumonia. And just like the name explains, it's healthcare acquired pneumonia, a bacteria infection that occurs in people who live in long-term care facilities or who receive care in outpatient clinics, including dialysis. Like hospital acquired pneumonia, healthcare acquired pneumonia can be caused by bacteria that are more resistant to antibiotics. Ventilator associated pneumonia. Now this is due to the lack of the ability to cough properly. The microbes may be in the tubing and inhaled by the patient. And then last we have aspiration pneumonia. And aspiration pneumonia occurs when you inhale the food, drink, vomit, or saliva into your lungs. Aspiration pneumonia is more likely if something disturbs your normal gag reflex. So you can't cough it up and you swallow it. And it's often referred to as going down the wrong pipe. Now who are higher risk? for pneumonia. So anybody can be affected by pneumonia, but there are two groups that are highest risk for this. So you have children who are two years old or younger, and then you have people who are over the age of 65. And as we mentioned before, some of the risk are being hospitalized. If you have chronic disease like uh, COPD, asthma, weakened or suppressed immune system, so people who have HIV or AIDS, someone who's had an organ transplant or receiving chemotherapy or on long-term steroids, they are at very high risk. And of course, our favorite, smoking. Smoking actually damages the natural body's defense against the bacteria and viruses that cause pneumonia. So again, smokers, it, it's never good to smoke. Signs and symptoms. Chest pain when you breathe or cough. Confusion or change in mental awareness. And this usually occurs people over 65, a cough which may produce phlegm, fatigue, fever, sweating, lower than normal body temperature. And this usually occurs in adults older than 65 and people with weakened immune system, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, and of course, shortness of breath. So for the sake of time, we're just gonna go over some of the treatments. You can pause the video.
So what are some ways to help prevent pneumonia? Get vaccinated. Vaccines are available to prevent some types of pneumonia and the flu. Make sure your children are vaccinated. Practice good hygiene. You want to protect yourself against respiratory infections that sometimes lead to pneumonia. So, of course, wash your hands regularly or use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And, of course, don't smoke. Why? Because smoking damages your lungs' natural defense against respiratory infection. And most importantly, keep your immune system strong. How do you do that? Get enough sleep, exercise regularly, and eat healthy. Vitamins are always a plus. If you gain value from this video, please consider subscribing liking, commenting. At the current moment, 98% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so please help support the channel. Subscribe, always like the video if you gained value from it, and thank you so much.